Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to both the nominees. Thank you for being here. Judge Lee, let me start with you. You are uh, committed to the Constitution, I assume. Is that fair to say? That is fair, Senator. And to the Bill of Rights. Yes. And do you think the Bill of Rights is deeply important to our foundation of government? Is that fair to say? I do. And the Equal Protection Clause as well. Is that fair to say? Yes, Senator. And the Constitution doesn't contain an emergency powers exception, does it? An emergency exception? Can it be suspended uh, in the case of an emergency? There is nothing explicitly in the Constitution that provides any sort of suspension during cases of emergency. Can the Bill of Rights be suspended during an emergency? Uh, there is nothing in the Constitution that provides for that. What about the Equal Protection Clause? Can it be suspended during an emergency? Government disfavor a certain group of people because it's convenient for the government? Again, uh, Senator, there's nothing in the Constitution that provides for that. Okay. Help me then understand your opinion in the Cassell case. This is about Governor Pritzker in your state, uh, his orders are in your, in, uh, within your jurisdiction, his stay-at-home order during the COVID-19 pandemic. He issued an order that allowed essential businesses and operations to operate at 50% capacity, but it applied only to secular institutions and services. He explicitly said religious activity was subject to a different rule. Religious activity, churches, synagogues, could only have 10 people in them. Everybody else, all other essential services, could have 50%, so hundreds of people go shopping, whatever. But religious activity, oh no, only, only 10 people or fewer for, for those folks. Different rule, explicitly different rule. You upheld that in the Cassell case, this differing standard that singled out religious people for disfavor. And you said that the Supreme Court of the United States has said that different rules apply during pandemics. The strange thing is, is I'm reading the case on which you relied, and it says nothing of the sort. You cite Jacobson versus Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's a 1905 case. You say that the Jacobson court explained that the traditional tiers of constitutional scrutiny do not apply. That phrase doesn't appear anywhere in that opinion. Tiers of scrutiny weren't invented by the Supreme Court for another 40 years. So help me understand where you're coming from in this case. Why did you conclude that religious people could be singled out for disfavor? Thank you, Senator Hawley, for that question. Uh, as I stated previously, um, when I decided that the Cassell case, which was later affirmed by the Seventh Circuit, um, it was early on in the pandemic, and um, we did not have the benefit of the various other rulings by the Supreme Court that came down after my ruling on Cassell. That held just um, the opposite. That uh, the, I, I guess I'm referring to uh, Roman Catholic as well as right. Hendon. Right, and, in which the Supreme Court held that you could not single out religious people for disfavor. State of New York tried to do precisely the same thing. And the Supreme Court said, actually, plaintiffs have a strong likelihood of success on the merits. You said they have no likelihood of success on the merits. So just help me explain. The Supreme Court took a totally different view. Help, help me explain how you looked at the same Constitution and came to a, a totally different conclusion. Why, why is it okay to single out religious people for disfavor? I don't understand it. What I looked at was whether or not the uh, Governor Pritzker's order was neutral and generally applicable to decide whether, at that time, to decide whether act secular activities were generally applicable. I looked at the type of activities uh, as well as kind of the sort of risks, uh, varying degree of risks that were present in those instances. So, for example... Well, can I just I, stop I, you right there? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I've only yes. got one minute left. I'm sorry, but it is, you, you've raised, I think, a really important point because the standard is, when it comes to First Amendment violations, is the, is the law neutral and generally applicable? This regulation wasn't neutral and generally applicable. It, it had one set of rules for shops, businesses, and a completely different set of rules for churches, which, of course, what the U.S. Supreme Court ruled. I, I don't understand how you can look at that and say it's neutral and generally applicable. The um, order, as I recall, also closed, for example, movie houses and auditoriums, as well as schools. And so when I considered the activities at movie houses and schools compared to activities carried on at churches, I found those to be, at the time, using the time pre tandem test, to be generally comparable or comparable. Uh, I agree, and I found that the... But the order said that re religious houses of worship were essential. So it said that 
essential businesses could be open, essential services, but at 50%. Initially, it didn't include any any carve-out for religious, any acknowledgement that religious services might be essential. He amended that, said, no, they are essential, but I'm going to cap them. So two completely different rules. Let, let me just, my time's about expired, so let me just read to you something from the Jacobson case, which you cite, which I'm surprised you didn't heed. Here's what the Jacobson case says. No rule prescribed by a state, nor any regulation adopted by a local governmental agency, shall contravene the Constitution of the United States or infringe any right granted or secured by that instrument. A local enactment or regulation, even if it's based on the police powers of a, of a state, must always yield in a case of conflict with the exercise by the government of any power it possesses under the Constitution or to any right which that instrument, meaning the Constitution, gives or secures. I, I'm baffled that you would cite this case in support of a decision that treated religious believers differently, indeed disfavored them, compared to other people. And I think the fact that the Supreme Court reversed on precisely this case later doesn't say much for the analysis that you employed, which frankly I find pretty alarming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.